Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, Rogue Glide Daily. I'd like to take this time and wish everybody a happy late Thanksgiving and a happy Black Friday. Um, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving day and weekend, and I'm sorry if you had to work. Um, hope you all got some time to spend with your family and loved ones and your friends, and uh, hope you all had a uh, safe travels, and hope you got to enjoy yourselves a little bit um, during this holiday season. As you can see, my bike is half clean and half filthy. I tried doing a video of the S100 products you see over there, and I wasn't quite happy with the way it turned out, so I decided not to post a video, and I'll be trying to do this again when it's daylight outside and not pitch black, because now it gets dark at like 5.30, and it feels like 10.30. But today, we are going to be reviewing this, the Quadlock Wireless CarPlay Adapter. And what this is for is this is so I can have my Apple CarPlay on my Rogue Glide Boom GTS system without having to plug in my phone. Now, there are some things that go into having um, specifically Apple CarPlay on your Rogue Glide that have the new Boom GTS system. Okay, let me walk around here and show you. I got the, I guess it's the Boom 2 GTS system one with the full touch screen up here. Okay. Now, I know Android's a little different. I have no idea. I don't have an Android phone. I have an iPhone. So I can't speak for all you Android users out there if this will work. Right now, I do have a wireless Apple CarPlay adapter. And let me show you what this looks like. This is just a quad lock wireless mount with a steer with the um, vibration damper on it. And for you guys that already know, inside here you have a USB connection for anything. Uh, most people will plug in their phones. What I really like about the Rogue Glide pouches is that these are big enough to actually put a phone in. Now, you can't just have Apple CarPlay pull up on your Boom GTS system, okay? There's some things that are involved. If you buy a brand new Rogue Glide off the showroom floor and you plug in your charging cable into the USB and in the fairing, it will not pull up Apple CarPlay like you see here. You have to buy an adapter. You have to buy a jumper, okay? Uh, the one I bought was off, at that time, off Facebook. You can buy them anywhere online now, pretty much. Um, I'll post a link, I'll post a picture right here in the video. But it's really easy. You take off the front fairing, and uh, right above the headlight area, like, like literally like right here, there's a spot and you plug in this jumper and then once you plug in that jumper it tricks the computer into thinking there's something hooked up but anyways once you plug in that little jumper when you plug in your phone by a cable into that USB plug-in then you can have your Apple CarPlay like you see here okay so that's how you get the Apple CarPlay with a cable. If you want the wireless Apple CarPlay, like you see here, all this is is just a charging pad, and I have no other cables plugged into my phone, then you have to have a Apple CarPlay adapter. The one I currently have is called C Play to Air, or CarPlay to Air. And I'll post a picture of that, and I'll post a link, I guess, um, here in the here in the description okay now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it so you can look at it let me turn off my bike here and let me reach in here and unplug this so you can have an idea and a comparison and I'll tell you why I'm switching them alright so this is the C play to air adapter that I bought mm, probably earlier this year or so hold on pause my Dwalt lights dying. Okay, as I was saying, this is the the CarPlay, the Apple CarPlay Air adapter I bought earlier this year, um, and it worked great when I first got it. I don't know if it's if it's just vibration or wear and tear, or maybe this cord here, you know, got kinked and um, there's a bad connection. But this is what I was using to get the wireless Apple CarPlay on the bike. Now, like I said, when this first came out, it worked great. Um, I loved it. 
the range has not been as good on this as I've heard other adapters have. I'm not really concerned about a ton of range. I'm not concerned about having 15 foot range um, with my phone when I walk away from the bike, okay? I'm just not. However, what this has been malfunctioning on is even with my phone from here to here, this hasn't been picking it up, okay? And that did not used to be the case. So I've had to um, frequently plug and unplug this hoping it would fix it, okay? And so that gets kind of old, especially when you're on the go, you're trying to get navigation pulled up, you need to see where you're going, stuff like that, all right? So then I found out that Quadlock came out with their CarPlay adapter, and it was on sale here recently, so I decided, hey, why not? Uh, you know, I'll be happy to try it out. I've been happy with all their other products. This is the second phone case I've had. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, or whatever it's called, I don't know. But um, I like it. I like my old phone case, and I've liked um, the whole mount system. So I figured, hopefully I'll give this a shot, and maybe it will work better. Anything's got to work better than this. Like I said, this worked great when, it, when I first got it, and now um, have just been less and less impressed with it, okay? It does have a USB plug-in back here, so you can still plug a phone into it, but, um, you know, I, I technically use it all the time um, because <laughs> I did some reworking in the wires here, but this cord here um, to my charger is technically what's plugged into this. So, and I ran this down through there and actually ran it through my fairing and came out and ran it through there. Um, but let me get this open. Let me plug it in, try it out, tell you guys what I think about it. I guess this can also count as an unboxing video. Um, man, people and their packaging now, man, they are serious about it. So, pretty similar in size. Uh, not much, not much difference here. They feel exactly the same. They feel like a little small, frail electronic. And I got some cords back here. We got some instructions that uh, I may may read if I can't figure this out on my own. Got some warranty information there. Looks like it came with two cords, a USB-C and a USB cord, which I will be using the USB cord, which is the one I'm going to need. I like that this cord is longer than that. That's pretty nice. Um, I guess I also like that this can be disattached with a cord, whereas this is fixed. So if I need to relocate this, like if I was in a car or something, um, I could move it uh, with a longer cord, whereas this one you really can't. But let me go ahead and plug this in here. This also has a USB on this side, so that's good. I'll be able to continue to plug in this. So inside here, it's tough to see, but there, there is the uh, USB plug. And it's really tough to see. It's really short inside the bikes. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm going to be plugging this into. Let me get around here. Remember, guys, size doesn't matter. It's how you use it. That's what they tell us. All right. So in this cable here is, like I said, the cord for my wireless um, quad lock adapter. So I just plug both of these in. And how come it always takes like three tries to get a to get a USB plug in? There we go. All right, I'm gonna leave this hanging out for right now. Let me come around here so I'm not fighting with my stand. Okay. So I'm gonna turn on the bike. I'm sure I'm probably gonna have to pair this. I'm sure I'm probably going to have to pair this um, via Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and open up the Bluetooth. 
Let's see if any devices pop up. There we go. Quad lock E4DA. It is connected, and as you can see here, it is auto connecting to my iPhone. It's asking, would uh, use Apple CarPlay with Quad lock? Yes, use Apple CarPlay. And it is still connecting. And after this initial setup, there we go. That was pretty quick. We'll see how quick the setup is from here on out. So right now, let's see. Google Maps, which is probably my most used app, is pulling up. This right here, this screen, where you click on Google Maps and it comes up like this. I don't know if it's an iPhone update or maybe a Boom GTS thing, but it has been doing that for a little bit. So I've always had to open the Google Maps on my phone as well to get this to open up. And then once I have that, um, let's just go to Bumpus in, in Jackson, Tennessee. Once it does that, it's normally good to go. But for whatever reason, when I first start it and first open Google Maps, it does that. All right. So there's that. Let me turn this off for a little bit. And I'll give it a second to totally shut off. Now, we're going to see how long it takes from the bike totally being off. It's already paired with my phone. It's already saved in my Bluetooth devices. There it is. Let's see how long it takes to connect and bring up the Apple CarPlay. All right, so now this is no longer charging, which means the bike is totally, totally, I mean, as off as it can be. Go ahead and turn this on. We're going to see how long it takes for the Apple CarPlay to connect and pull up on the screen. We'll just go ahead and click accept there. And this screen is normal while waiting for the Apple CarPlay. When the Apple CarPlay connects, this button right here will switch to an Apple CarPlay. There it goes. Connect your phone via Bluetooth. It should already be connected. There it goes. Auto connecting. So far. This seems about about the same amount of time as the CarPlay to Air adapter took. Which is interesting because this right here is saying it's not connected. But it's obviously connected here. Now, let's see what the Apple Maps does. Apple Maps, boom, pulls up just fine. If I go back here, if I go back here and go here, boom, that all pulls up just fine. All right, so it looks like this is going to work great. Um, hopefully, I have less problems with this than the CarPlay Air. Like I said, I don't know if it's the vibration from the bike um, usage, but I probably got mm, a yearish give, give or take on that out of it. And yeah, so hopefully uh, this quad lock will do better. I think it's really interesting that this is not con this doesn't say connected here. Now it does after I click on it, but nonetheless, it still pulled it up there. But guys, if you're wanting a wireless CarPlay um, screen up here, you got to get one of these adapters for it. And after I get some more miles on this, I will give you guys a follow up on the quad lock adapter and let you guys know what I think about it. Um, before on this car to play adapter, I could not have the phone in my pocket writing and it connected that I had to have my phone like in that cubby hole or up here close to it for it to connect so yeah the range on it wasn't spectacular so hopefully uh, we'll get to see what this quad lock does here in a little bit now another thing I would like to mention is your Apple CarPlay toggle your little arrows here it does not function the same that 
Oh, actually, as a matter of fact, this is interesting. Before, I could use this to, to toggle around. Now, I can't. Huh. Okay, so I... Huh. That is weird. So before, you could use this little thumbstick over here to, uh, to move around. I can't do that now. And my thumbstick just worked before this. So let's do something here. Let's, let's try something out. Let's uh, unplug this. Let's unplug that. Let's unplug this. Let's set this to the side. There we go. So once I unplug it, my controls come back. So you can see that your right stick here controls what you want to select and your left stick uh, controls like the home screen and things like and you know like like um, going to the home screen. It also controls your volume up and down and your song skip. Your right stick controls what you want to select. But that is interesting because the CarPlay to Air when it was plugged in, let me go ahead and plug that in so you can see how it operates. All right, so I have the CarPlay to Air that you see plugged in. And we're going to see how long it takes for it to connect. There it goes. It comes up like this. It's pulling up. Uh, connecting. Connecting. And like I said, it takes, it takes a little bit of a second also to pull up. There we go. Now look, so this is pulled up here. Um, what's interesting though is that I can use the right joystick here to control what I select. Huh. Whereas when I use the when I use the uh, quad lock one when I use the quad lock one this is disabled and my back button still operates on this that is weird let me plug this back in and see if it does anything different So as you can see here, I have the quad lock adapter uh, plugged back in. I'm just going to let this hang somewhere. I'm going to let it hang out in there. It's connecting. Got me a YouTube notification. Let's see what that is. Okay. Okay, now, now I can uh, select stuff. Huh. That was a weird fluke, and the back button works. Okay, okay. Well, hey, as long as it works, we're going we're gonna to go with it. Let me plug in the other cord and see if it maybe was the other cord having a weird, uh, a weird glitch. Okay, the other cord is plugged in. Huh, nope, it works again. You can see my, uh, my selection here moving. All right. I, I don't know what that was about. Anyways, what I was going to say is using your right joystick here to select things is different than the regular Harley Boom GTS. So, for instance, your up, down, left, right movements don't directly correspond. So, like right now, I'm on podcast if I press the joystick up it goes to the left if I press it down it goes to the right 
However, I press it to the left, it goes to the left. If I press it to the right, it goes right. Think of it like, think of all of this like a scroll. So really, if I want to navigate like to maps, you would instinctively think I can just press up on the joystick and it will go up. It doesn't work like that. What I actually have to do is either press up or press left until I get there. Then I can press on it. And like if I want to go to destinations, you would think I could just press down and go to it and it will work now. But let's say I want to go to this home icon. You would think I just press up and it will go to it, but you saw it shot over to work. Now if I press up again, it should go to home. But let's say I want to go over here to, let's say I won't go that way on my apps. You would think I could just press right and I could press right again. No, it goes to this one. So I have to keep pressing in like an order sequence. So like Panera, if I want to go, I mean, Pandora, Pandora, okay. If I want to go up to settings, I can't just press up on that and go to settings. I can press up and press up and press up and press up. I just have to scroll over to it. Then I can press on it. That's the only weird um, glitch or weird little feature with these Apple CarPlay devices. But most of the time, my screen looks like this. Um, I use Google Maps more than I use Apple Maps. And like I said, most of the time, my screen looks just like this. I can see my music playing. I can see my directions. That's it. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, like I said, there was a weird little hiccup there. I'm going to do another video of after I run this for probably several hundred miles and tell you what I think about it. Hopefully it does better. Um, anyways, like I was saying, my camera shut off because it got too hot, but hopefully I'll do another follow-up video on how this does after several hundred miles and uh, see how it does then. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, glad you came back. I'll see you again. Stay safe.